So here we are, this is CITR Radio and Stranded, the Australian Canadian Music and Talk Show. Generally, I'm speaking with musicians or poets, but today I have a fascinating guest named just Jordan Bobber. Now, he is uh, a local visionary, part of a number of very cutting-edge progressive projects. Uh, he's the director of the Vancouver Green Party, also the co-initiator of the Seedstock Community Currency, and a co-founder of Agrabora. Now, uh, Jordan, we're going to be talking mainly about the event that you're helping to organize and run this weekend, but uh, Agrabora, that really sticks out in my mind, and... Uh, what what is Agrabora? So Agrabora is a, um, a, a nonprofit uh, cooperative that I co-founded together with um, uh, with some friends with whom I uh, founded Seedstock Community Currency, and so it's actually the the legal entity um, that we uh, that that runs Seedstock Community Currency, but it has a bit of a broader mandate than that as well in our constitution. Um, we envision Agora Bora uh, serving basically any kind of community development purpose that helps people rethink the way the economy and the community can interact. And so Agora Bora is actually one of the ho- hosts of uh, Living the New Economy this year. And so it's just part of our, our much broader kind of vision of what we want to accomplish. Um, aside from community currency, we just want to uh, open up a space where people can connect and build grassroots economic alternatives. And definitely a very much needed uh, initiative at this point in our history with just so much so much knowledge now about why things aren't working. And uh, it seems like Vancouver's a real place that a lot of progressive uh, ideas are actually taking a hold, it seems, uh, would you say, compared to some other cities in, in Canada? Yeah, Vancouver turns out to be um, quite a hotbed for um, for the new economy, um, just in terms of the, the number of um, events that are taking place here, people that are talking about reshaping the economy. I mean, uh, there's a, a actually coincidentally, um, this is was the final day of a week uh, that the New Economics Institute in the state in the United States called New Economy Week, and there were events happening across uh, the United States, and uh, here in Vancouver, we're also part of that. Um, and we're, we're the only one in Canada that's, uh, that's a part of that um, particular initiative. Um, similarly, just earlier this year in April, uh, the New Economics Institute uh, funded a number of um, campus new, new economy summits across North America. And again, uh, UBC here in Vancouver was the only Canadian campus that um, actually ended up hosting one of the summits. So there's there's a huge amount going on here, and there's also a huge number of um, of really innovative social enterprises that are happening in Vancouver. Um, it's kind of a hotbed for um, community currency initiatives. Um, in addition to seed stock, there are a couple of other uh, local exchanges, the Time Bank, um, Bitcoin is actually taking off quite a bit in Vancouver, um, and then we have lots of people that are exploring um, the concept of things like shared spaces. And that's, that's something that we're going to be talking about in, on Sunday. You know, how do we address the um, affordability problem here in Vancouver by creating spaces that, that people can share, whether they be artists or entrepreneurs or anything else, and and uh, actually build uh, almost like an ecosystem within those shared spaces as well, where they're you know, bouncing ideas off of each other, being inspired by each other. So, so, so there's really kind of a culture that's developing here in Vancouver that's very exciting. It's up against a lot of challenges as well, especially because of the affordability issues that we have in Vancouver. Um, but somehow, it's it's managing to uh, just by virtue of the the people that this city seems to attract. There's a lot going on here. Hmm. Absolutely, it's so positive, and it is it is in the face of real realities of affordability with housing. And I, I really love the idea that that people can still come together no matter what is happening in your in your life. I mean, myself personally have struggled with some housing recently being renovated, having to move out into a further out region than I'd like, yeah. and 
And initially, one thinks, well, things are different now. I can't do the certain things I used to do. Not necessarily. You can still move in, move about um, and connect with people in, in shared spaces, or at least I, I guess that's what you're encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, something that um, we were even just discussing today, actually, is that um, so many of these things that we can do to... Um, to, as a reaction to things like affordability or the need to um, to dematerialize, to you know, to use less stuff, to be more sustainable, they don't have to involve a sacrifice in quality of life. They can actually um, involve an enhancement in our quality of life. You know, a lot of people are are now seeking out shared spaces, not only shared workspaces, but uh, collective um, housing. And it's it's really all about community. It's about reestablishing those human relationships and connections. And people are discovering that that's what gives them real value. And I think that's going to be the basis of the new economy. Um, that's 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 what I see as, as kind of the, the foundation of, of what we're talking about when we're talking about the new economy. And um, and so and now I mean specifically this weekend we're talking about the living the new economy is the name of the the event. You've done a lot already this week. Yeah. It's it's at Performance Works Theatre, Granville Island. It's a six day confluence of events, people, and ideas to explore, understand, remember, and catalyze the deeply interconnected nature of our world. But people who are just finding out about it now still have a lot they can take part in this weekend. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the workshops? Absolutely. So so this weekend, um, well, tomorrow morning, we're going to have a workshop on generative change. So talking about um, the type of changes that we can make that actually help to generate the, the next changes that we want to make, positive, build the positive world that we want to see rather than simply trying to adapt or trying to um, affect change by making slight te- technical fixes to things. Uh, so that's I'm really looking forward to that. That's with uh, Tam Landy. Uh, then in the afternoon, we're going to be talking about, uh, first of all, uh, we have a workshop that we're calling Reclaiming the Commons, why, why the future is going to be open source and distributed. And we have some really exciting people joining us for that. Um, we have Dallas Luther, who's the founder of Maker Labs, which is um, a really cool uh, concept here in Vancouver. It's a shared space. Uh, inhabited by people who are doing things like 3D printing and other forms of open source, small scale manufacturing. And we're going to also be joined by a um, Google Hangout by Michelle Bowens of the P2P Foundation. He's going to be joining us from uh, Stockholm, where he's, he's where he is right now. Um, and also uh, Tiberius uh, Brastovichiato from uh, Sensorica in Montreal, and they basically developed a new type of uh, company that's not really a company at all. It's, it's a way for people to collaborate as individuals on a common project and to um, uh, to, to reward their, their efforts, individual efforts into that um, project. So it's really cool experiences, uh, experiments. Um, we're also going to be having a workshop tomorrow on community currencies and also currencies uh, like Bitcoin, which aren't really community currencies. But just to give people an idea of the landscape, of uh, what kinds of alternative currencies they're going to be coming across and uh, how they're different and how they all relate in different ways to how we connect with each other. And uh, then we have a live crowdfunding uh, session uh, at 4 o'clock in which uh, several people are actually going to be launching crowdfunding campaigns live in real time and uh, people will get to learn um, about these amazing projects that they're crowdfunding for, learn a little bit about crowdfunding itself, and um, and also uh, see see it working uh, in in real time. Wow! Um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot going. That's, that's just Saturday so far. <laughs> oh my goodness! And then we've got a shared shared feast potluck where people can connect at the end of the day with people that they've been meeting throughout the uh, the day because that's. Uh, one of the important uh, things that we want to accomplish here is, is forging lots of connections between people. And, and of course, uh, the people can find out online. Exactly. I mean, jo- uh, Jordan's really just given you a, a taste for this. But if you go to the website... Actually, if, if you go to um, vancouver.neweconomy.ca... Right. 
Okay. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's that's where you'll get to to our website, um, and uh, and you can check out our program. We have uh, 24 events that have been taking place over these six days. Yeah. And this is, uh, I mean, it's looking like an annual event because the, it started last November, right? L last, yes, it did, yeah. 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 So, uh, it, it, you know, the writing's on the wall. I mean, we can see that things are, are changing and this is, seems like a bit of a watershed moment. And uh, I think it's fantastic uh, what you've organized and you, yourself and your colleagues. And um, that's the Living the New Economy at the Performance Works Theatre, Granville Island still over the next two days. Yeah, I thought I, thought I would just actually just mention that, um, that there's a bit of a down-under connection <laughs> here to living the new economy. Um, uh, interestingly, yesterday was um, a day that was devoted to Indigenous leadership and perspectives on the new economy. And it just so happens that uh, the majority of our presenters had some connection with um, either Australia or New Zealand including um, we had a group of 16 um, Maoris um, from Waikato Tanui College um, in New Zealand who joined us for that. And uh, we also had Ian Gill, who used to, uh, who's an Australian um, citizen who used to head up EcoTrust in both Canada and Australia. And, uh, and then Michelle Doherty, um, who uh, had lived in Australia for many years, um, until until a few years ago as well, so it was kind of interesting that <laughs> there was such a an Australia and New Zealand connection. Actually, and and just and today tonight there's going to be just kind of an allied event. Um, there's a, a Canadian woman who uh, named Nicole Foss uh, who speaks about uh, sort of the intersection between the economy and the energy situation. Um, she's on tour and speaking tonight at Langara College together with Lawrence Boomers from New Zealand, who is um, a major figure in the new economy movement down there. And uh, so it's just interesting that there's, there's such an influx of, uh, of uh, new economy energy coming from that part of the world. Oh, well, that's, that's right. And uh, I mean, a big part of, of the, what's being presented this week, I guess, is social permaculture too. And and permaculture came well originated in Australia, I guess. Uh, uh, Bill yeah, Mollison, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so so uh, definitely Australians are, are onto something. And actually, we just about had another Australian join us today, Donnie McClurkin from the uh, Post Growth Institute. But um, he was uh, prevented by some some issues with it at the U.S. border. He's actually living in the United States um, for the time being. But uh, <laughs> so we've had a lot of a lot of Aussie accents. Um, uh, coming around. And ah, <laughs> wonderful. Well, I'm I'm adding to that for one little, little bit more, and this will be out on the internet too as a podcast. So okay. there you go.